Hello, uh, we are in the second week of our course on polymers and uh, in this lecture, uh, we will look at uh, an aspect uh, related to sustainability of polymers and uh, specifically uh, reuse uh, of uh, the polymer. Uh, it is also uh, referred to as uh, repurposing of uh, polymers uh, and we will do this by first looking at some broader concepts uh, which are related to uh, sustainable use of polymers. Uh, this is uh, especially important uh, where uh, we not only look at polymers uh, from the point of view of their uh, usage, but also uh, from the point of view of their re-usage. Uh, recycling is something which we are all quite familiar with. Recycling uh, implies uh, that uh, we reprocess the material. But reuse is something uh, which is uh, like what we do for a glass we just wash it and reuse. So, if materials can be reused, then uh, they can uh, function uh, for a much longer period of time. So, is what is the possibility of reuse and in which way do we think about reuse in a broader context of sustainability. So, uh, let us first uh, look at this uh, broad concept which has become very important in the last uh, few years uh, related to circular economy. And uh, generally, we are contrasting this with uh, what we have done uh, traditionally uh, in terms of uh, linear economy, in which case we take a material, uh, we uh, produce, uh, then uh, it is used or consumed and uh, then finally, we generate waste. So, therefore, disposal has to be thought of. So, it is like a linear chain, uh, where chain of uh, processes where each one uh, is uh, separately thought of and uh, this disposal then uh, in the end does not lead to anything how we started with the raw materials for the production itself. So, that is why it is a linear uh, progression of uh, processes. Now, in a circular uh, uh, process, what we would like to do is to close and say that post disposal, whatever materials are generated, can they become raw materials for production again. So, one of the aspects of uh, thinking circular economy is also in terms of making sure that this disposal to production is also minimized. So, therefore, we think in terms of reduction, uh, we think in terms of uh, reuse, and we think in terms of recycle. So, all these aspects are combined when we start thinking of materials and products in a circular sense. Because in this case, we do not have end of life. End of life becomes beginning for certain other sets of processes. And so, if we think in terms of uh, these uh, circular economies, then uh, product essentially should also be designed so that we can reuse them and then we can recycle them or we can recover the raw materials from them. And so, uh, we expect the companies that uh, the business model has to be developed so that this is made possible. And so, we need importantly for a circular uh, economy to function and interdependent networks of users and companies so that we can uh, uh, focus on uh, trying to use the materials in a more sustainable way. And uh, generally, when we are thinking in terms of uh, circular economy, uh, questions which are very important uh, are in terms of, uh, you know, what is the impact of production, reuse, recycling processes. Uh, because quite often, we may think in terms of waste plastic, uh, the solution is to just say that, okay, we will recycle them. But we have to remember that a recycling process also impacts. When we reprocess, we there is input of energy, there is input of raw materials and there may be effluents. So, therefore, a recycling uh, technique is good for uh, repurposing uh, the material and uh, rather than having it disposed, being again uh, uh, coming back into application. However, it does have impact. So, instead of recycling, if we do reuse, then the processing and fabrication associated with recycling can be avoided. So, in circular economy, therefore, we think uh, more broadly in terms of how can we minimize many of the aspects related to impacts. And uh, 
the other thing also we will need to think of is whenever we are doing uh, recycling or uh, repurposing or reusing, uh, what is the impact of uh, additional substances which are added as additives in case of polymers. So many times we may use catalysts to polymerize as we have seen already. Uh, we use additives for uh, stabilization, uh, for uh, UV stability, for uh, enhancing the uh, flame retardant uh, behavior of polymers. So what do many of these materials do when we try to reuse, recycle, repurpose uh, these materials? The other uh, important aspects to think about when we think of sustainability of any material or any product or process is related to footprints. And we uh, have a very broad term called ecological footprint, which uh, is an indicator uh, which can tell us about uh, what is the influence of a particular material activity or a product on a natural ecosystem. And therefore, it uh, uh, talks about uh, the functioning of the ecosystem without getting disturbed by this product activity or a process. And so we generally think in terms of uh, land units. So when we are trying to fabricate something, how much land area would be required based on the amount of equivalent amount of energy that is spent or equivalent amount of impact that is had and so on. So for example, let's say when we are using composite materials, we can use uh, glass fiber or we can use a natural fiber and uh, quite often we will immediately tend to think that natural fiber is good because it's a renewable uh, resource and yes, that's true. However, natural fiber can have a bigger ecological impact in terms of land usage. So therefore, ecological footprint talks about the overall sets of things and one of the measure is also in terms of land usage. So land usage for uh, hemp uh, fiber is much more compared to glass fiber. However, there are several such indicators. One more indicator in this overall footprint calculation is carbon footprint. So this is the total amount of emissions that are caused while making a product or doing an activity. And it uh, mentioned in terms of uh, what is the equivalent amount of carbon dioxide produced of whatever greenhouse gases that are emerging. So this is in the context of climate change. So if we look at uh, polylactic acid, which is a, a bio uh, a polymer, it's obtained from a renewable uh, resource uh, like lactic, lactic acid, lactite. And so when we look at its carbon uh, footprint from the point of view of material, it's not there because we are using renewable resources. Uh, however, when we process it, because lactic acid or lactite has to be polymerized. So to uh, look at the process itself, uh, there is certain carbon footprint involved. But if you look at our uh, synthetic plastic like uh, polyethylene, then we have a uh, carbon footprint both in terms of raw materials itself because we are using a non-renewable petroleum oil-based resource and then of course process also. And you can again see interestingly that polyethylene process might require less carbon footprint compared to polylactic acid. But if you look at the sum total in terms of material plus process cost, then in uh, carbon footprint of polylactic acid is less. So all of these questions are very important and complicated when we start thinking in terms of sustainable use of polymers. Let's look at reuse a little bit more. Uh, and that's why uh, we will do this by just looking at a case study uh, from Bhopal where a survey was done to figure out, uh, you know, how are they uh, using the materials, the, whether it's metal or glass or paper or plastic. And what I'm doing here is just showing you the data related to paper and plastic. And uh, what households uh, uh, gave information on that they reuse a fair bit of paper. Uh, but if you look at reuse of plastics, uh, it is much less. So in general, if we have to think of uh, plastic uh, material as a more sustainable material, then certainly reuse of uh, plastics has to be increased. Examples of reuse of plastics, of course, uh, we see a lot of this reuse and uh, uh, I'm also going to highlight that this can be a problem and we have to be careful while reusing. But we see that uh, people using jars and bottles for uh, storing and refilling. This is done in kitchen household or uh, industries or uh, offices. Uh, we can use uh, material which was uh, made for uh, uh, 
polymer plastic can which was made for oil but it can be used for uh, storing water uh, something which was uh, discarded uh, from a public display board can be used as a roof cover so there are various ways in which we population already uses fair bit of uh, plastics before disposing it and uh, one other important class of reuse is within an industry itself so while producing plastic uh, while producing let's say automotive parts or chairs or uh, aerospace uh, products we have a fair bit of uh, plastic material which is generated during the process itself so therefore this itself uh, this scrap can be uh, directly again reused and uh, so lot of industries also tend to these days uh, reuse some of the material again in their production lines so that the overall value of disposal that uh, comes at the end is much less and uh, many of the times the reuse and repurposing in industry might have to be done by some clever adaptation of alternative strategies for example we may blend the scrap polymer with other polymers and uh, this is where i want to just highlight and you to remember the word compatibilizer whenever we mix two materials one polymer with another or polymer with fiber for composite we might need to think of compatibilizing so we have to always think in terms of these two materials and their interactions and can we make those interactions favorable so we also of course have to add uh, properties uh, enhancers so antioxidants to improve the stability or reinforcing agents and we may have to uh, modify the structure uh, we will see that when we uh, reuse the polymer again and again in an industrial process such as a molding operation maybe molar mass will uh, decrease because of uh, uh, chain scission chain breaking down reactions as we saw in uh, the lecture related to depolymerization so then we might have to do some modification to the polymer chain so that uh, molar mass uh, uh, decrease is negated in terms of whatever is the overall performance of the part just to continue with this reuse aspect and why reuse should be done uh, again this is some uh, study uh, which is uh, trying to highlight you know how uh, reuse pattern is uh, different in different countries and this is data from uh, three countries uh, uh, china hong kong and india and uh, what you can see is uh, reuse is uh, significantly higher in the indian context uh, for uh, plastic bags so this is something positive in terms of uh, the indian uh, survey at least this was data from 2011 and we have no reasons to believe that uh, we would have changed our behavior significantly if at all in fact we have become far more aware in terms of reuse of many of these plastic materials uh so the, the other quantification of some of these sustainability aspects of polymers can be done so in this work they highlighted that if you include reuse then the carbon footprint decreases so it's 80 if you say that we are not going to use uh, reuse or we don't have proper disposal methods but as soon as we start uh, having reuse and proper disposal methods then carbon footprint comes down so polymer can become lot more sustainable if we incorporate strategies of reuse disposal recycling into uh, its uh, overall usage one key thing that we as polymer scientists and engineers have to remember is reuse is it safe and appropriate okay why do i ask this question because polymers when they are in application are interacting with the surrounding environment other materials and this interaction is it changing to any change in its properties is it changing its chemical and physical nature also and when we now reuse it later on will that have an influence on the reuse for example uh, whenever we are reusing of course uh, we uh, would do washing so how how good is washing is it really washing away something which was considered not so good and therefore we are doing the washing so is washing really working in case of uh, applications where there are health inf influences sterilization may also be important so is sterilization effective two key things that uh, phenomena which we have to be very careful while reusing plastics are related to leaching and absorption uh leaching is something where uh, material from a polymer uh, 
let's say we can think in terms of a PET bottle which is being reused. So something which is there in PET can leach out to whatever we are storing. So we are storing water in PET bottle, something can leach out from PET to the water bottle. Or inversely, we can have absorption. So something, if you are storing, let's say, uh, a medicine in a, a plastic bottle, can some of the active ingredient of the medicine go and get absorbed in the polymer? Then therefore, they are not available. Or other ways to think about it is, initially the plastic can is used for oil storage. Now, can some of the oil molecules go absorb in polymer and plastic can? Now, later on, we throw the, the oil is used up, we wash the plastic can and now we use it for water storage. So now, the oil which is there in the plastic can, can it leach out to the water and when we use the water, will it be possible that it will be consumed? So therefore, these absorption and uh, leaching phenomena are also very important while reuse of polymers. So generally, interaction of polymers with other substances and fate and transport of small molecules and macromolecules over long-term exposure is something that we always have to think of. And so whenever we think in terms of sustainability of polymers, we have strategies such as reuse, recycle, but there is always caution in terms of safety and appropriateness of these strategies. And uh, scientifically, uh, to address these, of course, we need to be aware of phenomena such as absorption, leaching, uh, mixture, thermodynamic behavior of one substance with other. Uh, how do molecules move around when there is a concentration gradient diffusion? Is there a structural change when absorption happens? So all of these are fundamental scientific issues which are very important in addressing sustainable practices such as reuse and recycle. So with this, uh, we will close uh, this lecture on reuse and continue uh, our discussion related to single macromolecules for the next two, three lectures. Thank you.